Welcome to Corvus Amateur Drama Society's Christmas Cadaret. We're delighted to bring you a series of songs, sketches, poems and general silliness for Christmas. We really hope it brings you joy and a few laughs as well. Enjoy. Three 
tiny face lost two hot and a lesson in doing time. She. Hello everyone, my name is Oliver Efa. Let's do some Christmas cracker jokes. Let's pull the Christmas cracker. Whoa! That that went my it's went right on my back. Whoa, guys, look at this! I got a new rubber band paper. I wonder what's inside. Whoa! Wow, look at this! I got my very own yellow Christmas crown hat. I'll just pop it on. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Aha! Here it is. Here's the joke. Let's read some jokes. Yippee! Do you know Bruce Lee? Yes, I know Bruce Lee. Did you know that he had a vegan brother? No. Yes. His name is... Broccoli! I say, I say, I say. Why did the meatballs tell the pasta to go to bed? I don't know. Why did the meatballs tell the pasta to go to bed? Because it was way past a bedtime. Knock, knock. Who's there? Holly. Holly who? Holiday's here again. I say, I say, I say. Why did the monster eat the light bulb? I don't know. Why did the monster eat the light bulb? Because he wanted a light snack. Who goes O O O? I don't know. Who goes O O O? Santa Claus laughing backwards. <coughs> what do ducks love about Christmas? I don't know. What do ducks love about Christmas? Pull in the Christmas quackers! <laughs> Which pet makes the most noise? Oh, I don't know. Which pet always makes the most noise? A trumpet! <laughs> knock, knock. Who's they are? Happy. Happy who? Happy Christmas, everyone! Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <gasps> but wait! There's a bonus joke! <laughs> what robs you while you're in the bathtub? Rob a ducky! <laughs> thank you, everyone! The bells of waiting advent ring, the tortoise stove is lit again, and lamp oil light across the night has caught the streaks of winter rain in many a stained glass window sheen, from crimson lake to hooker's green. The holly in the windy hedge, and round the manor house the yew, will soon be stripped to deck the ledge, 
the altar font and arch and pew, so that the villagers can say, the church looks nice on Christmas Day. Provincial public houses blaze, corporation tram cars clang. On lighted tenements I gaze, where paper decorations hang. And Bunting in the Red Town Hall says, Merry Christmas to you all. And London shops on Christmas Eve are strung with silver bells and flowers as hurrying clocks the city leave to pigeon-haunted classic towers. And marble clouds go scudding by the many-steepled London sky. And girls in slacks remember Dad and oafish louts remember Mum. And sleepless children's hearts are glad and Christmas morning bells say, come, even to shining ones who dwell safe in the Dorchester Hotel. And is it true, this most tremendous tale of all, seen in a stained glass window's hue, a baby in an ox's stall, the maker of the stars and sea, become a child on earth for me? And is it true? For if it is, no loving fingers tying strings around those tissued fripperies, the sweet and silly Christmas things. Bath salts and inexpensive scent, and hideous tie so kindly meant. No love that in a family dwells, no caroling in frosty air, not all the steeple shaking bells can with this single truth compare. That God was man in Palestine and lives today in bread and wine. So this king goes to his garden and he has a little doze, but his brother puts some poison in his ear so no one knows. Steals his brother's crown and his money and his widow, but the dead king walks and gets his son and says, Oh, listen, kiddo, I've been killed and it's your duty to take revenge on Claudius. Kill him quick and clean and tell the nation what a fraud he is. The kid says, right, I'll do it, but I'll have to play it crafty so that no one will suspect me. I'll kid on that I'm a dafty. So with all except a ratio, because he counts him as a friend, Hamlet thus the boy will eat kids out, he's round the bend. And because he isn't ready for obligatory killing, he tries to make the king think that he's tuppence off the shilling. Takes the rise out of Polonius, tells Ophelia, take the veil, tells Rosencrantz and Guildenstern that Denmark is a jail. Then a group of travelling actors comes marching through the door, because they've come to do a special one-night gig in Elsinore. Hamlet, Hamlet. Acting balmy, Hamlet, Hamlet, loves his mommy, Hamlet, Hamlet, so frustrating, wonders if the ghosts are cheat, and that is why he's waiting. So now Hamlet writes a scene for the players to enact, so Horatio and him can watch to see if Claudius cracks. The play is called The Mousetrap, not the one that's running now, and sure enough the king walks out before the final bow, and turns out Hamlet's got the proof his uncle gave his dad the dose, the only problem being now that Claudius knows he knows, so while Hamlet tells his mummy her new husband's not a fit man, Uncle Claude puts out a contract with the English king as hitman. Cause when Hamlet kills Polonius, the concealed corpus delicti is the king's excuse to send him for an English hemp and necktie with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern to make sure he gets there. But Hamlet jumps the boat and puts the finger on that pair. Now they hurt his ears, his daddy has been stabbed through the arras. He comes racing back to Elsinore, too sweet, off foot from Paris. While Ophelia with her dad killed by the man she was to marry after saying it with flowers, she's committing Harry Carry. Hamlet, Hamlet, pff, no messing, Hamlet, Hamlet, learns his lesson, Hamlet, Hamlet, Yorick's crust, convinces him men good or bad at last must come to dust. Now Laertes loses patience and demands some retribution, but the king says hold your horses, I'll provide you a solution. So he sets up a sword fight for the interested parties with a blunted sword for Hamlet and a sharp sword for Laertes. And to make it double sure, the old belt and braces lion, he puts poison on the sword tip and some poison in the wine. The poison sword gets Hamlet, but Laertes goes and muffs it, because he gets stabbed himself and he confesses, then he snuffs it. Hamlet's mummy drinks the poison wine and as her face turns blue, Hamlet says, now I'm convinced the king's a baddie through and through. Well, incestuous, treacherous, damned in daily, says to be precise, makes up for hesitating once by killing Claudius twice. Cause he stabs him with the sword and puts the wine between his lips. He says the rest is silent, that's our Hamlet at his chips. They fire a volley over him that shakes the topmost rafter and fourteen brass knee deep in Danes lives happy ever after. 
Hamlet, Hamlet, so gory. Hamlet, Hamlet, end of story. Hamlet, Hamlet, I'm away. If you think that was boring, you should read the bloody play. We assemble the silver tree, our translated lives its luminous branches, numbered to fit into its body, placed in its metallic roots, to decorate our first Christmas. Mother finds herself opening, closing the red cross box she will carry into 1976 like an unwanted door prize, a timepiece, a stubborn fact, an emblem of exile measuring our days, marked by the moment of our departure, our lives no longer arranged. Somewhere there is a photograph, a Polaroid mother cannot remember was ever taken. I am sitting under Tia Teresa's Christmas tree, her first apartment in this our new world. My sister's by my side. I wear a white dress, black boots, an eight-year-old's resignation. May and Mitzi, age four, wear red and white snowflake sweaters and identical smiles on this, our first Christmas away from ourselves. The future unreal, unmade, Mother will cry into the new year with Lydia and Emerita, our elderly downstairs neighbours, who realise what we are too young to understand. Even a map cannot show you the way back to a place that no longer exists. Oh, well, this has been a difficult, a terribly difficult year. As a veteran and devotee of the theatre business for many years, I'm desperate, darling, desperate to erect a stage and present one of our dramatic creations. But instead, like many people, I've spent just too much time alone inside. When I do get to see people, I find I'm tongue-tied and the words get muddled. And even the simplest tasks seem difficult. See what I mean? I mean, I was standing in the garden the other day, staring at the sky, wondering why snowballs looked larger the closer they got. And then it hit me. I needed to keep my theatrical skills in tune. And as a frustrated pantomime dame, I thought I'd release a short extract on the art of theatre makeup. So I cannot stress enough the need for a clean canvas. So a good wipe down. That's what the face. Mm, oh, yes, that feels nice. And now I reach for the powder. And so a powder all over my face. So important to have a firm foundation, which one so needs before starting to apply the makeup proper. That's it, under every nook and cranny, every crevice, that's it. And so now the lipstick, where are we? That's right, put, oh no, not the lipstick, of course. It's the blusher, which one must select and apply carefully. Now the key word here is subtlety. My belief is that the blusher should be two faint rosy pools, which are barely detectable. Now the lipstick. Now, this lipstick should give a sense of humour, but without being messy or silly. So, as a child with a paint by numbers, one must be careful not to go outside the area of the delicately shaped rosy lips. That's better. And now for the eyeshadow, which... Oh, where is it? I've dropped it again. Ah, now, the eye... Oh, has it gone? Stop moving about. Where are you? Oh, honestly. Oh, there we are. There we are. The eyeshadow... Now, I must say, the eyeshadow has the task of bringing the eyes alive and really making them sparkle, because this is the closest thing there is to fine art in the whole process. There we are. Oh, I'm all of a quiver. I certainly shouldn't have taken that junior disparin for my headache before I started this. That's better. Right in the corners, too, very delicately. Mm, perfect. Now, here's a secret. I always insist on real jewels, and whilst I'm sure you think these look special, I'm sure you wouldn't expect me to say they're worth £2,500. Oh no, uh, actually that's the other necklace. Still very, very nice. Now in days gone by, I only used my own hair, but the toils of many productions have taken that opportunity from me, so here's a trade secret as I reveal that this is indeed a wig. Yes, indeed. And so last, but not least, darlings, 
is the cherry on the icing, the pinnacle, the piece de resistance, the fluttering false eyelashes. Always so important to get these spot on in the right place. Uh, although, admittedly, they can double up as a beauty spot if needed. <laughs> a very hairy double beauty spot. And so, ta-da! There, mission accomplished, darling, and happy Christmas! I'm now going to read you a very nice story poem called Snow Angels. Snow Angels. I do not walk in a winter wonderland. I speed and slide and swirl in it. Suddenly, I stop. My senses are all on fire in this cold world of ice. My mixed up mind needs to rewire. It needs to chill. So with a thump, I fall backwards into the crisp crust of snow. Lying here, the sounds are muffled and muted. The sky above is blue and boundless. But I shiver with delight as the iciness tickles and trickles down my neck. With a giggle and a wiggle, I embed myself deeper into my cooling cradle. After a deep breath, (gasps) I start sweeping my arms and legs out and in. Swishing and swishing. Swishing and swishing. How many times shall I do it, Mum? I shout. Mum! Down here! Look! Is it ready yet? She's not very happy. Mum doesn't do snow. Mum doesn't do cold. Peering through her fur-lined hood, she asks, Really? At your age? Regardless, I raise my arms up and she heaves me away from my masterpiece. Frantically, she flicks away the snow from my plastered back. Then I turn around to gaze upon my labours. This year, the angel is taller. This year, the angel is wider. This year, the angel is bigger. This year, the angel is the best ever. Thank you for listening. And I remember that we went carol singing once when there wasn't a shaving of a moon to light the flying streets. Now, at the end of a long road, there was a dark lane that led up to a house. And we stumbled up the darkness of the drive that night, each one of us afraid, each one of us clutching a stone in case, and all of us too brave to say a word. The wind through the trees made a noise as of old and unpleasant and maybe web-footed men wheezing in caves. We reached the black bulk of the house. What shall we give them? Help the herald? No, said Jack. Good King Wenceslas. I'll count three. One, two, three, and we began to sing. Our voices were high and seemingly distant in the snow-felted darkness that was surrounding the house that was occupied by, well, nobody we knew. We stood close together near the door. Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen. And then a small, dry voice, like the voice of someone who hasn't spoken in a very long time, joined in our singing. A small, dry voice from the other side of the door. A small, dry voice through the keyhole. And when we stopped running, we were back in front of our house. The front room looked good. 
balloons floated under the hot water bottle gulping gas. Everything was good and shone over the town. I bet it was a ghost, said Jim. I bet it was a troll, said Dan, who was always reading. Let's go in and see if there's any jelly left, said Jack. And that's what we did. Dear Father Christmas, I hope that you and Mrs Christmas are both keeping well in these strange times. This letter it's not a Christmas wish list as such, but rather a request that the gifts I received last year will not be repeated. Perhaps I'd better explain. Earrings. As you know, I love dangly earrings, look, but not ones with real polished gallstones. Gifts featuring body parts are frankly not acceptable. Books. You can't go wrong with a book but I cannot ever remember expressing an interest in extreme sea fishing or tractor maintenance. Polyfiller, pot of. Ho, ho, ho! How funny was that as a remedy for my deepening wrinkles? How amusing. Bed socks, fluffy. Another pair to add to my collection of 11. Marigold gloves. I asked for gloves. Set of lavender soap bars. Again? Air freshener. Please note, this does not count as perfume. Something slinky. I had rather envisaged something in satin, not a spring of coiled wire. Hilariously shaped teapot. I have never never said I wanted to collect novelty teapots, but here I am with another one to add to the shelf. Craft supplies. Ball of string and Loctite glue. Lemon and orange candied slices. This is a gift you give to grannies. Oh. Finally, the garden. I know we have previously had a problem with furry friends, but a box of rat poison? Really? I know this makes me sound terribly ungrateful, but honestly, Santa, just give me a bottle of gin. the song. <clears throat> I thought Alice was doing the song. Well she was but she's in the other room putting together flat pack furniture so it's gonna have to be me. Well you could have told me there was some sort of dress code. Didn't you get my email? No I didn't. Oh well you'll do. Mm -hmm. Come on Thanks. let's give it a go. Ready? <clears throat> Let me introduce the song first. Ladies and gentlemen tonight we'd like to give a rendition of one of our true West End favourites. It's a romantic ballad, and of course, it's from Lerner and Lowe's My Fair Lady. What's that? It's Alice drilling. Come on, let's just take a run at it and see what happens. So you and Eliza then? Well, just use your imagination. I could have all night, I could have all night and still have begged for more. I could have spread my and done a thousand things I've never done before. I'll never know what made it so. Exciting when all at once my heart took flight. 
I only know when he began to hurt me, I could have believe it's Friday already. Good call meeting up here this week. Yes, at least the library is warm and we can choose our next book for book club. Here you go Maggie, one toilet roll. Oh thanks. And mine, four toilet rolls and two inners from kitchen roll. I thought you could cut them down. Oh thanks a lot. Yes, well our Mick had a skin full on Friday and a curry. Let's just say that our Vindaloo saw a lot of action. Why do you want all of the loo roll tubes? You're the one with the stockpile of toilet rolls. But I can't unravel them all. And there's only one of me at the moment as Kev's away on a job. Again? So what are they for? I'm making my own Christmas crackers this year to save money. Please don't tell me you're taking the gifts off the magazines in Tesco. You nearly got caught removing the coupons the other week. No, you're all right. I'm buying them from 99p land. That's the recession for you. Good. I don't want you to be having your Christmas dinner in prison. Who's writing the jokes? Oh, we don't have jokes in crackers. Well, I never get them. Well, what's going in them instead? We'll put charades in them and act them out. Well, well, you know what they are if you write them. I'll get Ah Marie to write them. Then she'll know what they are. Oh, it won't matter. It's just Kevin and I this Christmas. The kids want to do their own thing. Plus, we'd be more than six if we all got together. That's a shame. What about little Stuart? You've spent all those months knitting him that scarf... You must want to see his little face when he opens it. Huh, I know I would. Ah, the scarf's one of the presents from Santa. I've got lots of other stuff free with the coupons. We'll take those over on Boxing Day. Well, I'll continue to save my loo roll tubes for you. Oh, there are more than I expected for two weeks. Ah, yes, well, our David's girlfriend's been around. Well, I say around. She's living with us. Is this the one you like, or the one with the pink hair, face piercings, and wrongly spelt tattoos? Thank heavens it's the normal-looking one, Maisie. Although, saying that, she is a vegan. That's not a bad thing, is it? Well, it makes cooking a bit difficult. Mick likes every meal to include a dead animal. Surely you just remove the meat and just give her vegetables? Well, not if it includes eggs and dairy, too. I can't just give her vegetables. What are you going to do for Christmas, then? What about a nut roast? You are having a laugh. The nearest thing I'd get Mick to eat like that is a packet of Nobby's nuts, with a couple of pints at the nag's head. I don't mind a nut roast. I made quite a few when Cassandra went through her vegetarian phase. I had a period as a vegetarian. Well, apart from bacon sandwiches... You can't be a vegetarian and eat bacon sandwiches. No, that's a flexitarian. Flexitarian? I swear you make this stuff up. I thought that was one of your yoga poses. Oh, I do wish you'd come to one of my classes. I know you'd like it. No, I do enough bending over backwards for the ungrateful masses at home. My idea of relaxing is an empty house, a sneaky Bacardi and Coke, a bar of chocolate and an episode of Cheshire Housewives. I can't believe they get paid for being so stupid. <laughs> You'd be rolling in it. Bernie! I'm not! Bernie didn't mean stupid, did you, Bernie? No, I meant 
funny. They are funny because they're stupid and and, and, and you are... Um, well, what Bernie uh, was trying to say, and it's a pity they didn't make a programme about normal Cheshire women with their common sense and natural humour and wit. Yeah, what she said. <laughs> oh, that would be funny to watch. I mean, we do have a laugh, don't we? We certainly do. Well, I wouldn't miss my Fridays with you two for all the highly paid TV contracts and designer clothes. From... Oh, sorry, girls. Can't make next Friday. Joking! Uh, joking! No, no. What we have is real. It certainly is. I think so. I'd be lost without you two, especially since Andrew left me for Miss Slutty Tits. Still, I'm better off without him. Except financially. Well, of course, I'm not financially better off. Well, that's not fair. As you did nothing wrong and now you have to live in a shoebox and he still lives in a massive house. Well, that would be down to the fact he could afford a better lawyer. Aren't you bitter? I am, and I was never married to him. Not really. I was at the time, but now I've had my time on my own. I've found the real me again. I am not Mrs Prendergast. I don't have to go to corporate dinners and play the wife. I'm Gwen, with a life and friends of my own. Oh, am I really a friend? Of course you are, Soppy. You and Bernie are my best friends. Blimey, those corporate wives must have been really dire. <laughs> oh, they were. Anyway, Miss Slutty Tits will soon trade him in for someone richer, given half the chance. Do you think? Oh, I know. Andrew isn't going to let anyone else get their hands on her boobs. They cost enough. Don't I know it? But hard to divide as an asset in a divorce settlement. Technically, I own one of her boobs. So, is she leaving him? Oh, do tell more. Regina Cockington suspects her husband is having an affair. Well, she deserves to divorce him just to get a new surname. Well, she cornered me after class to ask if everything was all right with Andrew and her. Is it? I don't know and I don't care. Well, what makes you think they're splitting up? Well, Regina has had a private detective following her husband as everything has been quiet in the bedroom department. Mm, she should count herself lucky. Oh, I know. Our neighbours are ever so noisy. Their son is always playing loud music and knocking on the wall. And? Well, she has pictures with her husband and Miss Slutty Tits having lunch. Well, that doesn't prove anything. It's not where it starts, it's where it finishes. Where they have coffee. Do you mean Costa or Starbucks? Shh. No, she means that she is normally dessert. Shh. He's probably shagging her. Will you be quiet? Oh, why didn't you say that? Well, it's not the sort of thing you blurt out in a library. Anyway, we're meant to be here choosing books. Looks like Miss Frosty Knickers is giving us the evil eye. Let's move over here, out of her eye line. Well, I'm not going to need this book. Giving birth without pain relief? God, this should be in the horror section. Mine's no better. The benefits of colonic irrigation. What have you got, Maggie? Oh, mine's OK. Surviving Christmas. Give it here. Must be in the wrong section. You hadn't read the full title. It's surviving Christmas with piles. Well, I'm not sure how I'm going to survive Christmas on my own. No, Cassandra? No, she's dancing in a Christmas show. Ah, uh, Panto? Well, sort of. Dragarella and the Beautiful Stepsisters. Oh, I don't know that one. Put it this way, Maggie. Don't take Stuart to it. They've taken the gender swap into another level. Oh. What's Cassandra playing? 
the fairly odd mother. Does she get to wear a tiara? I don't know. You and your tiaras. What, what are you doing, Maggie? Nothing. You're not ordering a tiara on eBay, are you? Oh, don't order a tiara, Maggie. I'll get you one for Christmas. Looks like we'll all be home alone this year. What about your Davies and his girlfriend? I thought we decided that you could make a nut roast. They're both going to her parents. All her family are vegan, so they know how to do more than just vegetables. I've told David I'll smuggle him a few pieces of my sausage plat in his suitcase. I hope that's not made with anything from your Jen's and Summer's catalogues. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can she do oral sex if she's a vegan? Do you mind? That's my son we're talking about. Maggie, is that what you were Googling on your phone? No, it's nothing. You're up to something. No, I'm not. Oh, get my phone back. It's from Kev. Of course they can. Eh? What's going on? Is everything okay? <laughs> it is now. Kev says I can invite you all for Christmas Day so we can have a proper family. Kev, Mick and the three of us we will be like a bubble of six. Six? That's only five of us. Oh, and Duncan. Not Kev's sexy divorced brother. Oh, yes. Gwen, looks like that's your Christmas present sorted. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it won't be too much for you? Oh, we can all mock in on the day. Well, let us chip in. Well, I have a turkey in the freezer that'll feed an army, as I thought I'd have an house full, so I'll cook that. Well, I have all the trimmings courtesy of my coupons, <gasps> except the nuts. Well, I'll get the nuts. Surely Duncan will have those. <laughs> <laughs> Cheshire Wives is so last season. You couldn't write what we have as friends. Ah, oh, here's to a Christmas with friends. Cheers. 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 Drunken strangers in red jumpers chatting on the underground Multi-generation families laughing with the neighbours round Can you take a picture of me standing by the tree? Oh, it's just like Christmas on TV Take a picture of me standing by the tree Oh, it's just like Christmas on TV Irish cream fuel dancing in a care home with an open fire Break down men in Santa hats help pregnant women with their tires No one is alone and no one wants to be Oh, it's just like Christmas on TV and we know there's not a lot of cash around He's right, so. But the lights are going up all over town We 
been waiting for this moment all year round. We've been waiting for this moment all year round. Can you take a picture of me standing by the tree? Oh, it's just like Christmas on TV and in the movies. Oh, it's just like Christmas on TV and at about TC. Every supermarket shelf is bursting with such pretty things. Hear the old self checkout bell, another angel's got its wings. People filling trolleys up as if this stuff is free. Oh, it's just like Christmas on TV and in the movies. Oh, it's just like Christmas on TV and at Abode TC. Oh, it's just like Christmas on TV. After Christmas, my true love and I had a fight. And so I chopped the pear tree down and burned it just for spite. Then with a single cartridge, I shot that blasted partridge my true love sent to me. The second day after Christmas, I pulled on my old rubber gloves and very gently wrung the neck of both the turtle doves my true love sent to me. The third day after Christmas, my mother caught the croup. I had to kill the three French hens to make some chicken soup. The four calling birds were a big mistake. Their language was obscene. The five gold rings were completely fake. They turned my fingers green. The sixth day after Christmas, the six laying geese wouldn't lay. I gave the whole darn gaggle. To the RSPCA. The seventh day, what a mess I found. All seven of the swimming swans had drowned. The eighth day after Christmas, before they could suspect, I bundled up the eight maids a milking, nine lords a leaping, ten ladies dancing, eleven pipers piping, twelve drummers drumming. Well, actually, I did keep one of the drummers and send them back collect. I wrote my true love, we are through love. And I said in so many words, furthermore, your Christmas gifts were for the four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. I'm now going to play We Wish You a Merry Christmas on the Ocarina.
Merry Christmas, everyone, and a Happy New Year!